Hello friends and welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and I have a card full of Pink Fresh Studio inspiration for you today. I'm using a bunch of products from current old past releases and I just wanted to show you how everything came together on this card. So let's have a look at the products that we're going to be using. I'm going to be focusing on this around the shape circle stamp set and I'll be pairing it with the circle floral stamp and the circle florals die. Now there is a coordinating um, stencil set that you could use for that but I'm actually just going to do some Copic coloring. Now, if you want to cut the circles out of that sentiment set, you're going to need the coordinating dies, which are the circle, the nested circles by Pink Fresh Studio, and those are the dies, and you could also use the um, foil plates for that as well. I'm not going to use it because I'm actually going to use the an ornate circle, which actually works perfectly with that thanks circle that's part of that set. So you could use these or you could use the ornate circle like I'm doing. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a plain piece of white cardstock here. It is about maybe six by uh, eight and a half. And you can see it's a little bit big. I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit to fit onto my Alton U stamp wheel. Now I just got the stamp wheel and it is available in the Scrapbook Pal store. It is a godsend. I've gotta say it really just ups your game when it comes to um, stamp positioners. So. Now I've placed down my cardstock and it sticks to that acrylic backing like perfectly. I don't need magnets or anything like that. My paper doesn't shift. It's, it's, I love that part of it. I've positioned my stamp here and you can see that I'm using the circle florals, which is one large stamp that stamps out like a small flower and then two curved florals. I'm gonna simply um, add some tuxedo, Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I will be doing Copic coloring and this is Copic safe. I'll stamp it in the top right corner. So I am positioning that stamp wheel so that I've got my blue dart dot, my largest blue enamel dot at the bottom. So, you know, when you get the stamp wheel, it tells you can add the enamel dots or something on in the north, south, east, west corners of your wheel so that you know exactly where you're positioning it. So now I know that I just have to turn it in 180 degrees and get that large blue enamel dot at the top this time so I can stamp it in the bottom left corner. So I get a, basically a mirror image here and I don't have to really move my paper or the stamp at all. I'm just turning the wheel. So I, as you can tell, I stamped these images out twice to get a nice crisp black image and we're pretty much ready to go. You see that it comes right off of that acrylic background nicely. And sorry, I do want to just mention it is the pho photopolymer stamp. It's actually a stamp, that background there. That's why it sticks so nicely. And cleanup is a breeze. You just do your normal cleanup with your stamp cleaner and you can place everything back as it was. Now, for my Copic coloring, I'm going to be using some V04 and V09 for the florals. So these are some beautiful violets. I'm not doing anything crazy here. So I've sped up my coloring process. There's really not too much to learn here, except that I'm filling in this image with color. And I'm just adding some lines and dots wherever I think there may be darker areas on the florals. And then I'm gonna use the lighter violet to just blend out the rest of the flower and just give it that pop of color that it needs. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with the greens that I'm gonna be using to color these in. I'm gonna be using G17 and BG09, so you've got a bit of a bluish tone to it, but you're really not gonna see too much of that because the G17 is gonna cover that up. It's just gonna create a darker tone underneath. Now, as I mentioned, there is a coordinating stencil, layering stencil set that goes with this. I don't have it, that's why I'm doing my Copic coloring, but if you wanted to make this a little bit faster, you could go ahead and use that. I chose to go with the violets and the greens because I just find that the purple and green go together nicely. I find that they have like a rich, uh, vibrant hue and I just like their combo together. Now, once I've got this all done, I'm gonna go ahead and just color in the other half with the magic of editing here. And this is what you end up with. So I've got four curved or like circular pieces that I'm gonna to put together on my card. So uh, before I do that, I do have to cut these out. Now there is just one die that cuts out all three of these pieces in one go. And so I only really have to put it through my die cutting machine twice. Then I'm gonna grab the ornate circle. Now, as you can see, there are two dies and you want to cut two layers. So the top layer uses both dies and it cuts that ornate circle and the center circle. 
And then the outline die is going to cut the background, which I cut out of some green uh, mirror cardstock here, just to go with the green that's on the florals. Now I'm going to do my stamping of my sentiment. So this thanks circle, as I mentioned, fits perfectly in the circle that's cut from the ornate circle, which again is why I didn't use the nested circles. So basically I get that circle cut instead of having to cut it with a separate set with that ornate circle. So say you don't have the nested circles, but you do want to cut those circles out. You can always get the ornate circle, which is I think cheaper. I'm actually not sure, but if you have it already, that always comes in handy. So I'm just going to grab my Alta New stamp wheel again and use that to stamp out the thanks for your love and care and you can see how gorgeous it turned out with one single stamp. I absolutely love the stamp wheel. Okay, so that's what our sentiment's going to end up looking like. Let's work on our background. So I'm using the Daisy Print die and this die is like um, a full coverage die it does not have an outline on it so i've already cut an a2 sized panel so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches and i'm just going to position my die on it put it through my die cutting machine and even though i did tape it on the top and bottom it's still budged a little bit that's okay i will cut it down just slightly and you can see that that washi tape is pretty much just fully adhered to that panel. And that's because I put it through my die cutting machine about six times. Once a uh, portrait style, sorry, two times portrait style and two times landscape style. Or, or if you wanted, you could use a metal shim, which makes sure that your cutting is perfect. So you can see that I used my pick and picked out all of those little centers, which are much easier to do when it's cut nicely. And now I'm just cutting it down to size. I'm just cutting little slivers from the edges so that I have just a tiny bit of a border and I'm kind of centering the pattern on the panel. Now I'm gonna grab an A2 size card base. This is a top folding white card base. I actually have it made from a past project because I tend to make them in, in uh, groups. Like I'll just cut up a few pieces of paper. Maybe if I cut up three, I'll end up with six, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my panel. Now I use some Tombow Mono Dot Runner and the Dot Runner is important because it's not gonna leave glue in between the openings of the daisy print. If you use a solid glue like the tape runner without the dots, you're gonna get that tape coming out you know, in the openings and I don't really like that look. You, you'll probably have to use a, a adhesive eraser to get rid of that. So yeah, stick with the dot runner. <laughs> so I'm going to just use the dot runner again to attach this ornate circle to the green mirror background. Now I want to create dimension here. So I just use the glue in the center and then I added some foam squares to those four solid portions of this circle. And that creates that dimension. It kind of just lifts the edges up. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing with that center circle with the sentiment. I'm just gonna add some more of those form foam squares in here. I would have used the larger ones, except I've kind of run out of them. That would have made this a little easier. But I'll just go ahead, remove the release paper, and remember to center this up. So there are two larger points on that ornate circle. I've used that to go at the top and bottom here. And then you can kind of see that dimension. Now I'm also gonna go around and sort of lift up the little edges and kind of zhuzh it a bit to give it a bit more dimension. And this just sort of shapes the paper in a way that, you know, it sticks up a bit and it actually makes it kind of stand out more. So you see that, you know, these pieces are lifted and there's like a lot more dimension on here than just the foam tape. So I've attached it now to my card base with the daisy print background. And then in terms of assembly, all I really need to do is add the floral bits. So I've got four of them cut out and they're gonna fit perfectly around the circle. You just need the four of them. I will have some of it hanging off the edges. So that means that when I do put this into an envelope, I'm gonna want to find an envelope or make an envelope that's just a little bit larger than an A2 sized card. So I'm just gonna tuck this in behind the green mirror cardstock portion. And you can see it just, it frames that ornate circle nicely and makes it stand out just a little bit more on that green daisy print background. So once I've got all of these four little floral pieces in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add one of those little flowers. So as I mentioned, the floral, the circle floral set, it cuts out two of those arches, circle arches, and then it also cuts one of these little flowers, which I thought would look gorgeous here on the sentiment bit. Now, 
I want to finish this card off with some embellishments and I mean Pink Fresh Studio has a large range of embellishments to choose from. I'm using some amethyst glitter drops and some iridescent clear drops which are my absolute favorite. So purple is my favorite color. So the, ameth the amethyst and the purple on the card like it just goes perfectly. And then those iridescent drops are perfect for any card. So because they are iridescent you can see on the table they shine the colors of the rainbow. However once you go and put this on your card it's going to pick up the colors from your card those are the ones that are those are the colors that those drops are going to reflect the most so if you look at it you'll see that the little gems that are the are the iridescent drops are actually picking up the purple from the card a lot more than the the green so it actually looks like a purple clear gem and that's all the inspiration that I have to share today. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. All of the products that I've used here today are linked in the description below and available in the Scrapbook Pal store. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.